Egyptian statue of Horus. It's a stone carving of Shiva. Some kind of funeral urn. like beadwork from the Phoenix collection. Marcus thought Potlatch Indians carved this. Looks like a movie prop to me. Looks like textiles from the Shamit collection. of a Siamese idol. searching for. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up.
I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Jones. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith? Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. For this place. He got away. Oh, we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What does the spy want with a Buddhist statue? <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapka. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Hello there. The show sold out, sir. Um... No seats, no standing room, no exception. I can't make a call, I'm out of nickels. It's unlocked. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. I'm here to enjoy Madam's outrageous orations. This ain't that kind of show. Oh, of course not. Madam Sophia is a serious thinker. Don't kid around, pal. You're talking about my idol. No kidding. I think she's the greatest. Me too. There's something about her. Yeah, she's very smart. Smart? I'll say. You know what I really like? It's the way she... she... The way she makes things easy to understand? That's it. All that smart stuff seems so easy when I'm listening to her. Say, you're okay for a college boy. Come on in.
Excuse me. Aha! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. I want a reading with Miss Hapgood. Are you crazy? During the show? Write a letter. Still beautiful, still impossible. Excuse me. Take it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, Perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? Isn't there something you'd rather be doing? Like what? Show business is my whole life! Don't you ever read? Sure, it's a hobby of mine. But what if I give you something to read? I might take a look. Here. Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? about time.
Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. Dr. Overman, fantastic view. We found the treasure we saw. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Uberman announced his plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So? Practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. Yet you never published a word about your finds. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. Nurha what? Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. where these beats really came from. Shh! I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... What? Oh, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine man. not in any library I've ever been in. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. How did the Nazis get interested in Iceland? Antiquities dealers probably told them about me. Nice friends you have. Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. Hello. 
Dr. Indiana Jones, I believe, and Madame Sophia Hapgood. This is my dick site now. Go away. I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. I was. Obviously, now I'm not. Doctor, what do you expect to find here? The secret of Hyperborea. That's what the Greeks called Iceland, you know. You've read how they sailed north to a fog-shrouded land, and how they never set foot upon it. Ha! After traveling thousands of miles, mere fog wouldn't turn them back. Some idiots claim they were repelled by ghosts. Papika, you know what actually stopped them, John? but I'm sure you're going to tell me. They were stopped by a force field put here by beings not of this earth. Hmm, that's fascinating, Doctor. Well, why did these beings show up here? I am convinced that these travelers came to Earth to form colonies like Atlantis, using Hyperborea as a spaceport. Up north here, we're close to the ether. It's a perfect landing site. So what's the link between Hyperborea and Atlantis? Right, the Yastro expedition, the one you're about to work on. Recently, I saw pieces from it, pieces that are clearly Atlantean. I see. Somebody must have been selling them. Go ahead, blame it all on me. Have you ever heard of Plato's Lost Dialogue? Yes, there are rumors about such a book, but I've yet to see it. There are two people you might want to visit. Charles Sternhardt in Tikal, a shady fellow, who claims he translated the whole thing. And Felix Costa, the Hector's Island. As a researcher, he's a farce, but he's a sharp trader. What was that about the lost dialogue? Talk to Sternhardt and Costa. Where did you say those pieces come from? If it's artifacts of Atlantis, you ran. Dr. Sternhardt and Costa. So you completely discount the supernatural? Completely! If it's supernatural, you will. Dr. Sternhardt and Costa. What is this thing you're working on? The bronze eel here? Oh, it's a, probably a homing beacon for wayward spaceships. Soon I'll have it out of the ice. What is this eel artifact again? I already told you. It's a, a, an Atlantean armor. I think. So long. Good luck, fellow believer. figurine trapped in ice. Listen. Yes? What do we do now? Let's find Costa and Sternhardt. Cold enough for you? Even colder than my feelings towards you, Jones. I think the good doctor's got frostbite of the brain. I'll say, spaceport my eye. Let's look around. Okay.